Hi, and welcome to another Vaadin Tips video. This week, we're going to talk about layouting in Vaadin Fusion. Now, I've done a couple of videos already on CSS in general, but this week I want to showcase some new CSS utility functions that we're introducing in Vaadin 20 and how you can already start using those in Vaadin 19 today if you want to. Uh, they're really something that excite me because they make layouting super simple and intuitive, and they will save you from writing a lot of CSS. So let's jump into our code and see uh, what using the CSS utility uh, classes looks like. Now, before we actually jump into the classes, just remind ourselves how uh, styling works normally in a Fusion app. So here in our template, we can create a new uh, div. Let's say let's create a container, and then let's just put in a non-breaking space here so we can style it. So the way we would style this is that we'd go into our CSS here, we'd scope our style, so about view in this case, and then we'd give the CSS class name like container, and in here we can then define our styles for that container. So let's say background color, let's just do blue so we can see it save it, you can see that it shows up there. We could do something like uh, height, 100%, and it would become 100% tall, like that. All right, so that's the normal way of styling things. We give our elements class names, and then we go into the CSS file and define CSS for them. Now there's another option to layouting and CSS that we're launching with Vaadin 20, and like I said, something that you can already start using today if you want to. Uh, if you want to start using these new CSS utility classes, you can install them through NPM, uh, through the package Lumo CSS Framework. And once you've installed these, what you want to do is you want to go into the new themes folder. So you need to have VOD in 19 or later for this to work. You go into the styles.css and you import the classes.css file from there. So this is the import that you need. And if you go in then and check out uh, these classes, you'll see that there are a bunch of these helper classes for anything from aligning content to setting backgrounds and setting borders and and flex and all kinds of stuff. And we'll, we'll kind of get into that in a moment. So if we go back to our example here, let's change the container class here. So we could have, for instance, background primary now instead, and we'd get a, a blue color like this. We could say H full to get a full height container. So, I mean, we've essentially just kind of recreated what we had earlier, but this time we didn't have to actually write any custom CSS for this. So this makes it kind of easy for you to uh, do uh, CSS or kind of layouting as you're just typing along here. Now, let's take a look at just aligning and positioning content in here. So I'm going to create a button button with a theme that's primary. And here I'm using Emmet in my uh, editor for actually creating these. So there's no, uh, no magic there. Most uh, text editors or HTML editors support Emmet out of the box. You can look it up and it's really kind of time uh, time saving when you're uh, creating these. So let's give it a, a caption here. Click me just so we have have some text here. And what we can do then, uh, we'll turn this into a flex container first of all. And what we can then start defining our alignment things. So we can say for instance, items center, if we want to center the items on the uh, axis here, or we could say, and if we want to have it at the end of the cross axis. So in this case, we have a, when we say flex, we have a essentially a horizontal flex layout. And the items here will always be the kind of positioning along the cross axis, whereas we can use justify center to center things again in the other direction or then we could have justify and like this. So that allows us to just change the position. So a very common would be uh, justifying and setting the items to center in order to just center a component like this. 
So that's pretty pretty convenient. Now let's take a look at some just very basic layouts like horizontal layouting, uh, vertical layouting. So for that, let's uh, again create a new container. And we already took a look at flex, so we're going to continue with that. So I'll create a flex container, and inside of there, uh, let's create some VOD and text fields. So just kind of simulate a form, if you will. So VOD and text field, and we'll give it a label, or we can say field, and then a number, and we'll create four of those like this. Save it, and you see that we have now four fields here. Now right now they're all touching each other, which isn't exactly what we want. So for that, we can go in and say spacing, end, medium, and we get some spacing at the end of them. We could go large if we wanted a lot of space, or we could go small if we wanted a little bit of space. Now, we could also use a property called gap here, so say a medium gap. The problem is that this works today in Flexboxes only in uh, Chrome, but it doesn't work in Safari yet, so uh, this is something to kind of keep in mind. Gap will work with grid layouts, which we'll cover in just a minute, but for now it's when you're using the flex layouts, it's kind of more safe to use this spacing, in this case, end, and then a medium spacing. Now you see there's a kind of a little problem here. Our, our field gets cut off, so we could also say flex wrap in order to have, have this wrap for us if it gets too narrow. So if we resize it, we can then kind of see how that the layout adjusts itself accordingly. We can also kind of have this flex go the other way. So we could have a flex column like this and have it being uh, flex like this. Now you can see there's a little kind of weirdness here where, again, these are shorter than the last one. And that's because we have now the spacing at the end of the element. Whereas when we're going in a column direction, we want to have it at the bottom instead. So uh, again, if you're uh, use, <laughs> watching this video in the future where uh, Safari supports gap, that's a uh, good way to kind of not have to deal with the different uh, or directions of the spacing. But for now, uh, again, the, the spacing is the way to go here. You can also define some uh, reactive breakpoints here. So you could say that for, let's say, large, large and uh, bigger screens, you actually want to have flex row and otherwise flex column. So now it's a column until we get wide enough and it will become a flex row. But again, now we have kind of a problem there. But what we can also do is have a uniform space like this. So it's both top and bottom. But you can see that that also kind of creates a little bit of problem. So really looking forward to the gap property to get implemented in, in Safari, if you haven't uh, already kind of deduced that. All right. Uh, now there's one thing that might look a little bit odd here when we're dealing with a column uh, flex box like this, you can see that all of the all of the fields are 100% wide. And that's because by default, uh, they're set to stretch, we can override that by saying, items uh, start, for instance, to align them to the start of the flex. Or we could have them centered if we wanted to. Now often, you'd like to have them kind of aligned to the start, but maybe one of the fields needs to be wider. So you can go in and, and just override for a single one. So we can give it a class, and then say self stretch, for instance which would stretch it all the way. Or you could say, and for instance, for, for whatever reason you wanted that particular field to be kind of at the other other end of it. So you can kind of see how you can also override the positioning or the alignment for an individual, individual element within the flex. Now this all just builds on a standard CSS flex box. So there's nothing uh, kind of magic about it. And again, if you go into the 
uh, classes CSS here, you'll find kind of all the different options that you have. Okay, so let's remove that and take a look at one last type of layout, the grid. Now, by default, the grid only has one column, so it doesn't look any different from what we just had. But we can say grid uh, calls two, for instance, and this will give us a two column grid. We can say gap medium in, in uh, grid layout. Gap fortunately works in all browsers, so that's something we can already already use here, and that's very, very convenient. So we can say that we want a two two column grid, we could have a three column grid, or whatever kind of makes makes sense for us here. So those are the kind of basic layouts that we can use uh, pretty easily through these new utility classes. So just Flexbox, CSS Flexbox, uh, through the Flex and Flex Call, or then the grid, uh, and specifying the grid columns or or grid rows, if you want to kind of dig deeper into into customizing the grid. Now, finally, let's take a look at how we can kind of do a more real life uh, layout in Vaadin. So remove everything here. And essentially what I want to do now, I don't want to kind of have an extra div here wrapping everything. Instead, I want to put already a couple of class names on this view itself. So for that, I'll override the connected callback like this, and then I'll remember to call super. Uh, dot connected callback to make sure that the element initializes and then I'll call this dot class list dot add and then we'll add a couple of these same same classes that we have. So the first one I'll add is flex. Then I'll add flex column. Then we'll add spacing bottom medium and height full like that. All right, and then let's go ahead and add some stuff in here. So the first thing I want to do is kind of a, a toolbar, if you will. So we'll have a text field and a button. So we'll have a, a div with a button text field. Again, this will have a label, just so we can kind of show how the alignment works. So name, and then a button button like that. And we'll give this some caption like click me. All right, so you see, we have uh, have these here. And what we can do then is we can, if we're happy with that, that's great. But we can also add a little bit of uh, layouting here. So let's turn this into a, a flex first of all. And that may have a slightly weird <laughs> Uh, effect here because you may not kind of effect, uh, expect this button to jump up here, uh, get aligned to the start there. So what we can also do is say uh, items, and so we'll line everything with the baseline here. And then we'll say spacing and medium, and we'll add a little bit of spacing here in between. All right, and then let's create a button grid next button grid, and then we'll have button grid column with header equal to col column like that. And we'll have, say, five of these. So now we have a, a grid here, and it kind of looks the way we want it to. We could specify here also, since we have two items in our uh, in our flexbox, so the entire view is a flexbox. We can actually go in here and say class uh, flex grow. Just make sure that the uh, the grid here gets all the extra space available here, and we could also, if we wanted to really be sure here, to say flex shrink zero, I think it was, to make sure that it doesn't shrink anyone. If you're kind of unsure about these, again, go into the classes. If you're in VS Code, press Command P to search and just search for the classes.css. You can also find it here within your node 
uh, dependencies under the Lumo CSS framework. And what you can do in here then is you can start searching for these. So in this case, I want to make sure that the flex grow zero here, or actually flex shrink zero uh, class name was correct. And it, that seems to be the correct. So that way we ensure that this one doesn't shrink any more than it needs to. All right, so there you have it. Just a couple of tips on how we can use the new Lumo CSS utility classes for super simple layouting in Vaadin Fusion. If you wanna use it with Vaadin Fusion 19, you need to install them through NPM, the Lumo CSS framework. Or if you're on Vaadin 20, the install will look a little bit different. Uh, they will be included in the framework, but as an optional uh, import, just so that those who don't use these uh, utility classes don't need to add them to their uh, download bundle. So uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. I'll post a couple of uh, links for you to get started uh, again in the description. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.